In today's video, we will be demystifying the arc formation process in a circuit breaker, breaking down each step in a way that's easy to understand. But that's not all, we will also explore the methods used to extinguish these arcs. By the end of this video, you'll have a rock-solid grasp of these concepts, empowering you to tackle real-world electrical challenges with confidence. So, hit that subscribe button, and let's jump right in. To start with the arc formation process, imagine you have a circuit with a high current flowing through it. This current could be the result of a fault or simply due to normal operation. Now, when you need to turn off the circuit for maintenance or due to fault detection, the first step is to interrupt the current flow. This is where things get interesting. To interrupt the flow of current, the electrical contacts within the circuit breaker start moving away from each other. This creates a small gap between the contacts. However, the current doesn't just stop abruptly, due to a fundamental property of electricity called inductance. As the contacts separate, the electric field across this gap becomes strong enough to ionize the surrounding air. Ionization is essentially the process of turning air molecules into charged particles, or ions. This process forms a conductive path known as a plasma channel. This channel allows the current to continue flowing even though the contacts are no longer physically touching. Creating an arc The arc itself is a visually striking phenomenon, a bright, fiery path of ionized air that carries the current between the contacts. The arc has a unique property, it's highly conductive. This means that once it's ignited, it can sustain itself even if the voltage across the contacts decreases. The arc's conductivity keeps the circuit path alive, and this is where the potential dangers lie. The arc generates an intense amount of heat due to the high current passing through the ionized air. This is where circuit breakers come to the rescue opening the contacts and effectively extinguishing the arc. But how does it do that? Well, there are two methods of arc interruption. High resistance interruption method and the low resistance or current zero interruption method. Let's first look into the high resistance interruption. We know that, if arc current is to be interrupted, the resistance of the arc should be increased. This is achieved by increasing the length of the arc. Since the resistance of a conductor is directly proportional to its length. Thus if the length of the arc increases, arc voltage increases, and resistance increases, and arc current will decrease and finally, it will be interrupted. In this method of arc interruption, we use three steps for interrupting the arc. 1. Lengthening the arc. 2. Splitting the arc. 3. Cooling the arc. Let's elaborate on step 1. Lengthening the arc. The length of the arc can be increased by making it flow through a longer path. This is achieved by using arc runners. These are V-shaped blades made up of conducting material. The arc struck near the bottom portion of these blades or arc runners. Due to the magnetic field created by arc runners, the arc becomes a conductor placed in a magnetic field. So a force is produced on the arc in the upward direction. Thanks to Fleming's left-hand rule, as the arc travels upwards, its length increases thus the resistance of the arc increases and current will decrease and the arc can be interrupted. Step 2. Splitting the arc. The arc is elongated by means of arc runners. The length of the arc can be further increased by splitting the arc. Arc splitters are used for this purpose. The arc splitters are made up of resin bonded fiberglass. The arc splitters are located at the top of arc runners and are placed in a perpendicular direction. The blowout coils produce a strong magnetic field that pushes the arc toward arc splitters. And finally, cooling of the arc. The temperature of the arc is brought down by some means. For example, in an air circuit breaker, air is forced onto the arc to cool the arc. The second method of arc interruption, low resistance or current zero interruption or current interruption in an AC circuit breaker. This method is used for AC circuit breakers. The alternating current of 50 Hz frequency crosses zero for 100 times 1 second. For every zero crossing the arc current is zero and it is again established. Thus the arc restrikes when the current is near zero crossing, 
A dielectric medium in the form of air, SF6 gas etc. is introduced near the contacts. This causes deionization and the arc is extinguished. The current zero instant is determined by using a suitable electronic circuit. And there you have it, a comprehensive understanding of the arc formation process in a circuit breaker and the methods used to quell those fiery arcs. If you enjoyed this video and want to keep exploring the electrifying world of electrical engineering, don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe and ring the notification bell.